Welcome brothers and sisters. Welcome to a new video of Triple Grace. My name is Michael. I'm the founder of Triple Grace and the Righteous Pass Movement Foundation. And the topic of this video is the Royal Twins. Sarah and Perez, the twins of Judah. Now brothers and sisters, I was always asking the Lord, why is it that we have to go to the holy mountain and why there has to be a great exodus when all this has already happened? And the answer of the Lord was, because you are the other twin. And then I asked, what twins, Lord, what twins? And then they said, they are family relations, they belong together. And the two must become one, two sticks will be come together and be one again. And now he will, he's leading me to this study, to the royal twins, the royal twins of Judah. The royal house of Sarah and the royal house of Pharez. And from Pharez, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is coming. And we are the house of Sarah. And there is so much falling into place right now with this understanding. So let me go to a great study online. I, that is online. I will put a link to it in the pinned comment. Let me go there right now. Let's see if I can manage. So, here. This is a study by on uh, Hope of Israel Org. The modern descendant of Sarah Judah. And this is by W. H. Bennett and John D. Kaiser. When Jacob Israel gave his dying blessing to his twelve sons, he associated each of them with some animal, object or personal characteristic which afterwards became the emblem of the tribe descended from him. Among these, the lion, the emblem of Jacob's fourth son Judah, is of special importance. This lying in a cogent, lying position became the emblem of the tribe of Judah. Then, in a peasant position, standing upright, it became the emblem of the camp of the, no, in a peasant position, it became the emblem of the camp or brigade of Judah. Later, when the addition of a crown, with the addition of a crown, it became the emblem of the royal house and the throne of Judah. And still later, in a rampant, standing in, on the hind legs with both forelegs elevated posture and with a crown, became the symbol of the two tribed house and kingdom of Judah. Yet this lion, usually portrayed as tawny or golden in color is not the only emblem of the descendants of Judah, or even the only lion. Sarah and Pharez. In the last four verses of Genesis 38, in the scripture, brothers and sisters, it is in the scripture, we find recorded the birth of twin sons to Jacob's fourth son Judah, and the Holy Spirit is all, all over me. I feel it so clearly. This is the answer that we are looking for so long. Notice what these verses say. Now it came to pass at the time of forgiving birth that behold twins were in her womb. And so it was when she was giving birth that the one put out his hand and the midwife took a scarlet thread and bound it on his hand saying this one came out first. Then it happened, as he drew back his hand, that his brother came out unexpectedly, and she said, How did you break through? This breach be upon you. Therefore his name was called Perez. Afterward his brother came out, who had the scarlet thread on his hand, and his name was called Vera or Sarah. This is one of the most important events recorded in Bible history. The birth of a great many other people are recorded in the Bible, but in this one case only are the details given. And the question is why? Why is this particular birth singled out for such a special attention? The birth was a matter of great and special significance because Judah's other sons could not inherit the prophetic promise 
that from his descendants would come the future royal family of the nation of Israel. This was because they were the children of a forbidden union. Their mother was a Canaanite. And that is absolutely true, you can find it in the scripture. And because they are the children of a forbidden union, from that line Jesus could not, never have come forth. Therefore, with the older of these two boys, destined to be the ancestor of the future royal family of Israel, the question of which of them was born first, and therefore the hair, was a matter of very great importance. It was also, as the Bible shows, the basis or beginning of serious family trouble. In the record of the birth we find that the hand of Sarah appeared first, and that the midwife tied a scarlet thread or cord around his wrist, saying, This one came out first. We then read that the hand was withdrawn, and that the birth of Pharis ensued. Here indeed was the seed of family discord. Which boy was the firstborn, and therefore the hair? Sarah was the scarlet cord around his wrist, and the pronouncement this came out first, of Pharez, whose birth was completed first. Eventually, Pharez was declared the rightful heir, and from him descended the official branch of the tribe of Judah and the Davidic royal house, and of course our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, how did Sarah and his descendant react to what they undoubtedly considered a wrong decision? that robbed them of their rightful inheritance. These are twins, brothers and sisters. The twins of Judah. This is the house of Judah. Who is telling you about this? Who is, who is teaching you about that? This is very, very important. Pay close attention. All the other videos following are based on this teaching. That they did not accept this ruling and that many of them left the main body of Israel during the time of the bondage in Egypt becomes very clear when we examine the tribal geneal genealogies as recorded in the Old Testament. These records, or these records, the main lines of descent from Pharez Judah for a very long period of time, but the record of the descendant of Sarah Judah apparently end with the third generation. Since these genealogies, and, and especially those of the chief families in each tribe, were kept with great care, any omission would indicate that those omitted were no longer in the land when the record was made. As the genealogy of Sarah Judah apparently ceased with the third generation, it naturally flows that most, if not all, of Sarah's descendants must have left their main body during the time of Israel's captivity in Egypt and therefore, and that is so important brothers and sisters, and therefore before the Exodus. And with this in mind, where then did they go? Since they were descendants of Judah, the emblem was a lion. It is very unlikely that they would give up this emblem of their identity and descent, even though bitterly resentful towards the rest of the tribe of Judah. They were kept there, therefore kept the lion as their emblem, but added their own variations to it to show that they were entirely separate and distinct from the tribe of Judah in Israel. In their bitterness they would make the difference as great as possible without actually doing away with the symbol. So instead of a tawny quotient lion, they depict theirs as both rampant and red. As a result, the rampant red lion became an emblem of Sarah, the branch of the tribe of Judah. Brothers and sisters, what we see here, what we see here is our ancestry. Why is it that we will be trained as a royal priesthood when the Jews claim only the Jewish line is the royal priesthood? Because that's not true. Because they were twins. They are royal twins and they belong together. But they are separated. They are the two sticks that need to come together. The two houses, the royal house of Sarah and the royal house of Pharez. 
They belong together, but they are separated for so long. And Sarah and that, that part, that twin, left Egypt. That line was going out of Egypt before the Exodus. And this is also the answer why the Lord told me, you are the other twin. And as the other twin, when you leave before the Exodus, you never had your mountain experience. You never had an Exodus. You never went to the mountain with the Lord. You never had a tent of meeting. You never had the Ark of the Covenant. All this was not there. And that's the reason why the Lord said, but the twins must be equal. And so the Lord said, then if you do not have it, then you must have it now. And therefore we are going in the great exodus. Therefore we will stand at the base of Mount Zion. And therefore we will be, be ruptured into paradise and we see everything. Not in the same manner as the uh, the house of Judah or Fares, but in a different way. But it will be the same, we will come to the same level. We have to go and find the Father and we will find him at Mount Zion. And the house, the Jews, that Fares part of Judah, will seek and will find the Son during the first three and a half years, or let's say during the whole time period of the trumpet tribulation. Everything is explained here, why we are also royalty. It's not only the royal house, with this one of Jesus Christ, but it's also the royal house, and they are connected together. As you can see here on that image, you see that there is a connection between the royal house and the royal house of Fares. They are twins, and they need to be united. We know we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior because we have accepted him. The other line does not have. Also, he belongs to them and he is their king, but they have not. So they will find him and we will return to the Father. We will have our mountain experience, our great exodus. All this will happen for us so that we come on to the same level, that the royal twins again will be united that there will be a united house of Judah, a perfect way to start the Millennium Kingdom, to unite the houses, so that everything will be under one king, one face, and in unity. I put the link for that study document in the first pink comment. Go and have a look at it. It's not about endorsing any worldly kingdom that is now there or that they have come from there. It is just to tell you that the royal bloodline has gone from Egypt to the West and that we are also part of this royal bloodline and that we are part of the other twin of Sarah. And it's very important for the understanding of what is going to happen now. And it's very important for the understanding that our timing is not post-Exodus, but pre-Exodus. I will come in another video to it to, to explain to you what this truly means for us. Here I will close with this. Continue your study by yourself. Get an understanding. Do not be invoked by people who are claiming, oh, that line, this scarlet cord is about the Antichrist. No, it's not. It's not. They are both holy lines. They are both the twins of Judah. They are the holy lines of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and they belong together. Otherwise, you could also say, oh, the Jews are now completely away from their past, and they are not belonging anymore to the house of Paris. But that's not true. And in the same way, we also have the royal line within us. And that's the reason why we have to become the royal priest. And we are the royal priest of the house of Judah, as the other royal priesthood of the Jewish line also are there. But we belong together, because the houses, the twins, were born at the same time. Let us finally bury the dispute and come together in a loving manner. The two sticks must come together. The twins must return to their land, to their place, to their throne. And that is the Millennium Kingdom. 
twins, two royal houses, bringing forth on the, on the same level those two tribulations, the seal tribulation and the trumpet tribulation. What a great picture, what a great God we have. Praise the Father, praise Jesus, praise the Holy Spirit. Great understanding is coming for us. Brothers and sisters, I will close here and I will continue with it in the next video. Have a great day in the Lord and be blessed in His holy name. Amen and Amen. Maranatha.